Let's see how we are going to find the difference quotient of a function and the difference quotient is given by this formula here. Sometimes you may see people write f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. That's fine too, but in this video, I will be using a. So the first thing is that when we have this function, to find f of a plus h, well, we just have to plug in a plus h into the x. So the first part is going to be 3 times a plus h. And then after that, we have the plus 17. So this right here is the first part, f of a plus h. Then for the next part, we need to have f of a. And that's just plugging a into the x here. So we will have 3 times a and then plus 17. Now, we are going to subtract, right? So make sure you subtract, and you have to subtract both of this. So make sure you put the f of a, this part, in a parentheses, because it has two terms. Because later on, we will have to distribute the negative. So all that over h, and then continue. Distribute the 3 right here, so 3a plus 3h, plus 17, and then distribute the negative. So negative 3a minus 17 all over h. Now you can see that 3a and minus 3a cancel. 17 minus 17 also cancel. So we just have 3h over h. You can cancel out the h right now if you would like, but to make it more clear, I'll write this down. We have 3h over h, and then I'm going to cancel out the h for you right here. So the final result is just h3, and that's it. In fact, whenever you are finding the difference quotient, if this is a linear, notice we have y is equal to mx plus b form, right? The slope is equal to 3. And for a linear function, the slope is always equal to 3. In another word, the rate of change is always equal to 3. So the difference quotient will always be equal to the slope, which in this case is 3. And we're done. Now for the next one, f of x is just equal to 5. It's also a linear function. Well, what's the slope of a linear function? 0. And it's always going to be 0. So you can tell this right here will be eventually 0. But let's do the work and see what else do we get. First, we have to get f of a plus h. But there's no x, right? So that means f of a plus h is just going to be 5. And then minus f of a is just 5 as well. So we have this over h. 5 minus 5 is 0. Over h, we get 0. Done. Next, we have a quadratic. 3x squared. So the first part, plugging a plus h into this x. We will have 3 times a plus h and then squared. So this right here is the first part. And then we will have to get f of a, which is just plugging a into the x. So we have this. And then we will have to subtract them. Right, so this right here is just subtracting f of a. And then o divided by h. Now for this one though, we will have to expand the a plus h squared. Keep the 3 right here. When we multiply out a plus h squared, either use the formula or you can write it down twice. a plus h times a plus h. And you get a times a, which is a squared. a times h is a h. h times a is another a h. Last d is h squared. So you have a squared plus 2a h plus h squared. And then at the end, we have that minus 3a squared. And this is all divided by h. Then we can distribute the 3. So we will have 3a squared plus 6ah plus 3h squared minus 3a squared 
O divided by H. Then we can see on the top, 3a squared minus 3a squared, they cancel. So we have this over that. Now, both of the terms on the top, they have H. So we can factor out an H. And then we get 6a plus 3h, right? And then O divided by H. Then we can cancel this H with the bottom H. So the answer for this is 6a plus 3h. And here's a small tip for you guys. Whenever we do different quotient questions, like this formula here, the H on the bottom, the original H on the bottom, they should always be cancelled with the H on the top somehow. And as you can see, it happened right here, right? The H cancelled. This one, okay, it was zero, so technically H is gone too. And then right here, the H got cancelled as well. So keep that in mind. Okay, another quadratic practice. So x squared minus 4x. So for the first part, we will have to plug in a plus h into this x and also that x because we have two x's right here, right? So we have parentheses square minus 4 times and both of them inside will be a plus h. So this is f of a plus h. Now we will have to subtract f of a f of a is just you put a into all the x's. So we will have a squared minus 4a. But this part has two terms. Make sure you put parentheses around it because we will have to distribute the negative. So now we are just going to expand it. This right here, we did that earlier already, which is a squared plus 2ah plus h squared. Right here, distribute the negative 4. And then distribute the negative. So we will have this all over h. Now, we can cancel out a squared with the minus a squared. And uh, minus 4a plus 4a, that's it. Okay, and then we can see on the top, for the remaining terms, they all have an h. So let's factor that out. We will have 2a from here, just an h from here, and then minus 4 from here, all over h. And then we can see, cancel the h, and then we just get 2a plus h minus 4. Once again, the original h got cancelled, right? So that's it for this. Now let's do a square root case. So firstly, we will have to plug in a plus h into the x. We have the 2 plus square root and we have the a plus h. So this is f of a plus h. And then we will have to get f of a, which we just plug in a into this x here. So that will give us 2 plus square root of a. And then we will have to minus, but it has two terms, so put parentheses around it, and then all divided by h. Now if you kind of simplify this a little bit, you can see this is 2 plus square root of a plus h, distribute the negative, so minus 2 minus square root of a all over h. Here, the two cancel, so we have square root of a plus h minus square root of a over h. Hmm. So far, we still cannot cancel the h on the bottom from the h on the top somehow, right? So what do we do in this case, though? Here, whenever we have a square root situation, we will try to use the conjugate to help us out. So let's multiply the top and bottom by the conjugate, which is just you keep the first square root and also the second square root 
But in the middle, instead of a plus, sorry, instead of a minus, change that to a plus. And you do the same thing on the bottom. So. Okay. And then we'll just continue, we'll multiply it, and you'll see good things will happen. On the top, you can multiply it out with just the FOIL method. Right? You can just multiply it out with the FOIL method. Or you can also use the quick way, which is this. I will write it down right here for you guys. If we have a minus b times a plus b, this is our capital A, this is our capital B. a minus b times a plus b, this is the idea behind the conjugate. We will end up a squared plus minus b squared. So if you want to multiply out the top the fast way, you can just do this. The bottom, just keep it. Because remember, we want to cancel the h, right? So just leave the bottom. But for the top, I am just going to have the first term, which is square root of a plus h. And then square that minus the second term, which is square root of a. And then square that. They cancel out very nicely, right? thanks to this formula. And of course, you can also multiply this out. This times this, well, square root of a plus h times square root of a plus h, since the insides are the same, we'll just get the inside, which is pretty much that. And then if you distribute, this times this will be positive, and this is a negative version of the same thing, so the middle term cancel. Lastly, this times this is negative square root of a squared, which is what we got right here as well. Or maybe the formula is better, right? Okay, on the top, we really have a plus h minus a, and then the bottom stays the same. Then we see a minus a cancel, and yes, you can cancel this h and that h right here, but I prefer to write it down again for you guys. So this is h over h times square root of a plus h plus square root of a. And I'll cancel this out again for you guys. See, I told you the h from the bottom will be canceled. So final answer, 1 over square root of a plus h plus square root of a. And then we are done. Now for the next one, we will do a fraction case. Here we have 1 over x plus 2. So first, plugging a plus h into this x. So we will have 1 over a plus h, and then plus 2. So this is our first part. Then the second part, we need to have the f of a, which is just 1 over a plus 2, and then subtract it. Now, we have a complex fraction situation, and this is also called the compound fraction situation. What it means is just that we have one small fraction, another small fraction, instead of a big one. And now it looks like a happy face. So, how do we take care of this? Well, we can multiply the top and bottom by the lowest common denominator, of the small fractions, which is just simply both of them together. And we do the same thing on the bottom. Okay, what do we get next? When we take both of this, multiply with that, you can see this and that will cancel, so it's just this times one, right? So, I'm just going to write down 1 times a plus 2. And then minus, next, when we take this times that, the a plus 2 will cancel. So, we will just have 1 and then times a plus h plus 2. And then all divided by 
For the bottom, just keep it. Don't multiply the out. Now, we're just going to simplify the top. Right here, make sure you do not cancel the a plus 2 or the a plus h plus 2. No. Because as I told you, when we do difference quotient, you are trying to get rid of the h from the bottom, right? So keep that in mind. Another reason is because we have this minus in between. So we really have to combine letters on the top first before we can do any cancellations. So on the top, distribute the one, which doesn't matter, but distribute the negative, just be careful. We get negative a minus h minus two all over the denominator. Then we can see a minus a, 2 minus 2, so we will just have negative h over that denominator. And ladies and gentlemen, congratulations, go ahead and cancel that h. And you know you did this right. Finally, you have a negative 1 on the top, keep that in mind. And on the bottom, you don't have to multiply the out, just leave it like this. And then we're done. That's it.